Let's dig into the subject of variational quantum algorithms. So variational circuits are the practical embodiment of the idea that we want to train quantum computers the same way we train neural networks. And the basic way a variational quantum circuit is, is that it, there is some quantum circuit that forms the basic subroutine of a larger algorithm. The quantum subroutine takes in the state preparation or, or kind of input data x, and it also has some circuit parameters theta and then it outputs some measurement statistics. These measurement statistics go through some classical processing, and then you use some optimizer or some update rule to update the parameters in some outer classical optimization loop. Now, variational circuits are also called parametrized quantum circuits or even quantum neural networks. So a variational circuit consists of the following ingredients. So first thing we wanna do is prepare some initial state psi, and as usual, this is often a ground state or a zero state or some fixed reference state. And then we want to execute some parametrized unitary transformation, which breaks down to a sequence of gates. And the parametrized is important here because that's, that's where the variational parameters come in. Those are the things that we're going to vary are the parameters of the gates. So the architecture of the circuit is fixed, but the parameters fed to the gates are not fixed. And then to convert quantum information back to classical information, we want to measure some particular observable, which we'll call B. So a particular variational algorithm will contain a few fundamental ingredients. So first, you need to decide on a circuit ansatz. So an ansatz is the structure, the architecture of the circuit. And this is sometimes fixed in place for a particular algorithm, or it's sometimes up to the user to decide what this can be. We also need a problem-specific cost function. So this is something that codifies a particular objective of interest that we want to minimize or maximize and relates it back to the outputs of the quantum circuits. And then we need a training algorithm. And for me, I would like to really focus on gradient descent, but you could use other training procedures if you'd like. And what the training algorithm should do is it should take some function computed from the output measurements of the quantum circuit and then update this circuit's parameters based on that information. So a famous example of a variational circuit is called the variational quantum eigensolver. It's one of the very first variational algorithms. And it's in particular focused on quantum chemistry problems. So simulating chemicals using quantum computers. So the three ingredients I said you need are the ansatz, the cost function, and the training. So the ansatz could be something that's very much heavily tied to the intuition or the chemical or physical nature of the problem. In this case, uh, something called a unitary coupled cluster singles and doubles. It's a particular ansatz that's related to quantum chemistry. We need some problem-specific cost function, and in the case of VQE, this is actually a energy measurement. So you have some Hamiltonian observable, some, some output that you observe that measures the energy of your circus. And then a training procedure. And again, in this particular example, I've chosen gradient descent, and I'm gonna use the parameter shift rule to compute the gradients. And the goal is to minimize the cost function, which is the energy. So it's going to find the minimum energy state of a particular Hamiltonian or a particular physical system. Another example is QAOA. I've heard also called QAOA, but I don't really like that, that name. Uh, it stands for Quantum Approximate Optimization Algorithm. So in this particular case, the ANSATS is uh, a very particular structure. It's, it's something that comes from the uh, initial statement of the problem itself. And it consists of a repeated series or a repeated layering of different circuits, sub-circuits. So there's a cost uh, circuit, which implements something related to a cost function. And then there's a mixer uh, circuit or sub-circuit, which implements something which kind of jumps or coherently moves into different configurations. So in the case of QAOA, the cost function is something that is encoding a optimization problem. So you might have an optimization problem, a discrete optimization problem with many clauses that have to be satisfied. And you can encode this into an Ising type model, a spin chain type model, which can then can be uh, converted to some observables that you would measure on a quantum circuit. 
In this particular example, I'm going to use gradient descent, but instead of using a uh, standard optimizer, I'm going to use a Schatz frugal optimizer, uh, for instance, something called Rosalind. So there's, there's lots of different ingredients at play here that you can pick and choose or might be specifically chosen by the variational algorithm itself. So there's a number of different uh, variational algorithms out there in the literature. There's, there's actually quite a few, and you can break them down into different subject areas. So there's ones related to chemistry or physics. So these are preparing quantum states that emulate physical systems or tell you inf interesting properties of physical systems. There are variational algorithms related to uh, mathematical problems, such as factoring or solving linear equations. And these can be seen as near-term candidates to uh, replace things like Shor's algorithm or HHL algorithm for solving linear systems of equations. There's also a number of variational algorithms tied to machine learning, and this is not too surprising because variational algorithms are inheriting a lot of structure from machine learning, so machine learning is one of the natural application areas. So there's quantum generative adversarial networks, there's quantum classifiers, there's different kinds of quantum neural networks, for instance, uh, recurrent networks or graph networks or optical implementations or convolutional quantum versions of neural networks. So it's quite an interesting research area right now and there's lots of ideas out there and I encourage you to check out this website uh, at the bottom of the slide here if you wanna see some more examples. So a little bit more about the ANSATs. Um, ansatz is a German word. It's basically in, in physics, it means something like an educated guess or additional assumption that's kind of chosen at the start, but which is kind of verified as being correct throughout the course of the problem. So in the case of variational circuits, the ansatz is the particular structure of the quantum circuit. And as I said, sometimes the structure is completely fixed by the problem, and other times the structure is more flexible. So some might say it's completely uh, selectable by the user. So in VQE in particular, there's no requirement that you have to use any particular ansatz. The only thing that's fixed is the cost function. Whereas in QAOA, some of the cost function influences the actual circuit that you're using. So the ansatz is an important ingredient and there's lots of ways to choose it. And it's uh, still very much an open question about what are the best ans ansatz in, in variational circuits for different problems. So again, the reason for choosing a particular ansatz, uh, there could be many. So there could be some intuition or some, some like logical or physical or um, mathematical basis for choosing a particular ansatz. So I did mention that VQE doesn't force you to select an ansatz, but you might want to choose one that we know is likely to be similar to how actual chemicals or chemistry systems work. Again, the ansatz can be dictated by the structure of the problem itself. Uh, the ansatz can come from intuition borrowed from other fields like machine learning, or the ansatz can be something that's taken in order to make something more trainable, um, or the ansatz can really be arbitrary. Uh, you can use your imagination and there's no reason to favor one ansatz over another one. But the choice of ansets will affect the quality of the model that you're able to learn or the quality of the answer you're able to achieve from your variational circuit. And one general piece of advice is the deeper you can make your ansets, typically the more uh, expressive it can be and the, the better results you'll get. So another important thing to take into account is the input data. So Circuits don't just have free parameters, but sometimes you also need to input data into them. Right? Some problems it's not necessary, but other problems it's necessary. So how do we actually input classical data into a quantum variational circuit? There's actually a number of different strategies you could take here, and it's still very much an open research question of how to embed classical data into a quantum circuit. So one of the simplest choices you can make is say, well, the easiest way for a parameter to enter a circuit is through a rotation of a single qubit. So what I could do is I could just rotate a single qubit in proportion to the value of a, of a single data point, so a single scalar value. So that's very common. But I really want to warn people that this is not sufficient. Uh, if you do that, then the only thing your circuit will ever 
produce as, as a function of this input data will be a simple sign function. So it's it's much more complicated story and there, there needs to be still a lot of exploration done in, in order to find the optimal or, or reasonable ways to embed data. So just as a, as a kind of mentioning of some strategies that are already available uh, that are going beyond this very simple initial strategy is something called data re-uploading. And the idea is not to up, not to embed data using a single rotation, but actually a sequence of repeated rotations. And maybe there's free parameters in between those as well. And this can make a, a more complex function available to you in your circuit than you would have if you just did a single rotation. The other idea is to have actually a trainable embedding layer. So don't worry so much about training the the unitary of the circuit, worry about training the embedding and then use standard quantum information metrics and tricks to, to classify the data, for instance. So uh, learnable embeddings is also a very viable strategy. So when we're using variational circuits, um, if you can compute the gradient using the parameter shift rule, then that opens up every possible flavor of gradient descent that you could want. So there's standard gradient descent, but also in deep learning, there's all sorts of other gradient descent optimizers that are available to you. Ones that you see most common are momentum and atom, probably. But there's also a number of quantum aware optimizers that you could use. And these are things that inherently take into account that you're optimizing a quantum circuit and not just a black box. So for instance, I've put three different examples here of quantum aware optimizers. So one is, uh, it's actually a pair of optimizers. They're called Rotosolve and Rotoselect. They're in the same family. These actually don't use gradients at all. So instead of using the gradient, they recognize that there's this sinusoidal structure to quantum circuits. And if you're only ever looking in one direction in parameter space, you can actually find a minimum quite easily just by going to the minimum of, of that particular sinusoid. And then you can iterate through that process many times and hope that you can find via a sequence of individual jumps to local minima eventually end up in a global minimum. Another cool quantum wear optimizer is called quantum natural gradient. And the basic idea here is that the inherent geometry of quantum circuits, of quantum computing circuits and quantum physical systems is not Euclidean. So it doesn't look like uh, the, the world around us. It's not like this rect rectilingular structure. It's more of a it's more of a sinusoidal structure. So we should take that into account. We should adjust for the inherent geometry of the space that we're optimizing in. And then there's a family of optimizers that are called Schatz Frugal. And what these do is recognize that in current day quantum computers, the number of circuit executions is actually a very precious commodity. And if you're having to wait in a queue online, it's, this can really slow down your optimization. So these optimizers are much more frugal in how they use optimize, uh, how they optimize using shots, and they they rely on a lot smaller number of shots, especially earlier on in training, to get estimates that you need to train the circuit. Final thing I want to mention, and this is a topic that people have probably heard of before, is there's this notion of barren plateaus for variational circuits. The basic idea here, and it's it's similar to something that happened in deep learning, is that there are parts of the optimization landscape where the gradient is zero. And anywhere you go around it, the gradient is also zero. So they're, they're very flat. And so it's hard to, to use a gradient descent strategy because everything just looks like you're completely flat in every direction. So barren plateaus actually come from a number of different effects. There's not just one effect, but there's multiple ways to do it. They can come from the choice of your circuit ansatz. They can come from the choice of parameterization or parameter values, or they could come from your cost function. And there's a number of different proposals for overcoming these, uh, but it's still an open question, I would say, to how to avoid these in, in general. So you could use a specialized initialization strategy. You could go with a layer-wise expansion of your circuit bit by bit and try to avoid it by making the, sh the, shortcut, the circuit short at the earlier stages of training. Or you can go with adiabatic type approaches where you have a very kind of slow evolution towards a targeted goal. And these are nice pictures that illustrate the Bering plateau phenomenon, where if you're sitting anywhere in this landscape except right at this, this center, you really can't look in any direction and see anything but flatness. So Bering plateaus are, are an interesting uh, barrier that we'll have to overcome in order to train variational quantum circuits.